Happy Thursday, Trade Hackers. Today is Thursday, March 11th. I'm going to go over my trades for today and then also recap the week as this is the last day uh, of our live stream this week. Remember, we won't be streaming live tomorrow on Friday or Monday, so I'll go ahead and recap the week here. I will be trading. I will be in the community posting, uh, posting what I'm seeing. I just won't be able to stream live, so I won't count that on our official day trading live track record. But um, <clears throat> so... To start with, uh, P&L for the day, plus 495, so green day. Uh, Mighty 90, just one one for one. Uh, did a Mighty 90 in Amazon, booked 760. Did a pairs trade. This is a, a little bit later in the morning than normal for our pairs trade, but jumped in a long NASDAQ versus short Dow for a $171 profit. And then the runners, a little bit in the red, thanks to Beyond and Piton. Uh, Boeing, basically a scratch, plus 40, Beyond, minus 600, Disney, minus 240, DKNG, nice winner, 546, Neo, minus 196, Piton, minus 750, and my biggest winner win, uh, 764. So let's take a look at these, and I'll show you what we did. Starting with Amazon on the Mighty 90, had this initial flush down, got long right here, caught a bounce, closed out half for uh, over 10% profit. Uh, kind of chopped around and then really started to push. Uh, I was looking for a couple consecutive green bars. I really thought Amazon was, was heading towards highs of day. Uh, but then the market started to flush, and so I ended up just closing it out right here uh, and booked a profit of 760 in Amazon. On to the runners. Uh, first one in Boeing. So Boeing obviously a monster yesterday and uh, I was looking potentially that it was going to be again today I mean it just fired up out of the gate you know just scaling increasing um, increasing volume here uh, I was trying to get in on a pullback after this volume bar is almost as high as the first and just never pulled back just kept ripping up so I got a little bit cautious because of a the move yesterday and then this big move on top of that today uh, that these volume bars might actually be more of an exhaustion, and that certainly ended up being what it was. Uh, but I was able to get out of it unscathed. Just got in with a small position here uh, to go long, looking for a potential continuation. Kind of chopped around, chopped around, finally popped up, chopped around, chopped around. I ended up, uh, I can't remember exactly where I closed it out, but I ended up just scratching it for plus 40 on the day, which ended up being a good decision. Uh, beyond, beyond slapped me. I uh, had this big volume spike here on the way down. I was looking for a bounce to get short. Got it. Uh, did not continue down like I wanted to. Just kept going, pushing, pushing, pushing. So I finally ended up just saying, uncle, closed it out and took a loss on that one, which ended up being a good exit because it kept pushing. So, uh, you know, you just you never know exactly how far it's going to go, but it certainly didn't look like it was going to roll over. And so at that point, I just bailed. Uh, Disney, minus 240 on Disney. Uh, Disney looked like it, it just got super strong. This was really frustrating. Started getting super strong after acting weak, all the way back up to highs of day. Started consolidating. I got long right here, and then uh, I think I added a little bit here. Chopped around, chopped around. Just was the rest of the market was just pushing, and Disney was just chop, 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 chop. And so, wouldn't you know it, when it made this little push down, I was like, you know what? This is not uh, working like I had hoped. It's not. Uh, it's not. It's not pushing when the rest of the market is just absolutely strong. Right after I got out, boom, chop, chop, boom, and I missed it. So I ended up taking a small loss, and it could have been a monster winner. But that's how it goes sometimes, my friends. That is how it goes. DKNG uh, plus five forty six. So DKNG. Uh, let's see, we did a, an upside runner and um, not related to volume, just watching price action. Price pushed up above yesterday's high, chopped around, chopped around, got uh, long right in this area here and uh, kind of just scaled out. I think I may have, uh, I can't remember if I, I don't think I added back in. Anyway, I just ended up scaling out, got out of my last piece uh, right around here as it, it, it was trying to make its way through the pivot, couldn't quite do it. When it started to fail, I just cut out my last piece. Booked a nice winner, 546. Uh, Neo, this is one that somebody suggested in the room. I'm not naming names, but I do completely blame them for this loss. Uh, Neo um, was uh, had some had a big massive volume spike here. So on this bounce, got short, 
uh, got out of part of it, but then it just it rallied up, so I ended up just cutting out of it, um, and uh, and took a little loss there. So it was a small position. I just didn't want to, not one I wanted to battle. And then Piton, I had high hopes for Piton. This was uh, my biggest size trade by allocation because I was, I had a, a lot of confidence in it. Started off weak and then came all the way back up to highs of the day and gave us the volume that we wanted. So on this little pullback, got long. It started to spike up, closed half for a nice profit, looking for uh, continued higher prices. And then the market started to flush and Piton was flushing harder than the rest of the market. And so when it did that, I just got out of my last piece uh, or my other half and ended up taking a pretty sizable loss there. Uh, obviously it bounced back up, but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't still in it for that. So I uh, got out of a loss there. And then win, my biggest winner, this also was a... Uh, called out by somebody in the room and uh you know I, I blame people for losses and i also give credit when i have winners so layuba thank you for the win for the win-win uh big massive volume spike here on the one two three four fifth bar look for a pullback got it right here to get long for continuation and just stayed in this baby just went 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 i actually had uh got out of my last no, I, ha I still had one contract on here, started to pull back, added some more, and wrote it back up again. So plus 764 in win. Uh, 495 on the day. And then for the week, let me bring back my tracker. For the week, did uh, 2716. So winners across the board in all strategies. 907 on the runners, 845 on the pairs trays, and 964 on the Mighty 90s. Now, a couple things to point out. One, only a 50% win percentage on Mighty 90s, but still booked a decent profit. So back in the green after a couple reds on the Mighty 90s, but just not getting a lot of trading opportunities. Uh, only four trades this week. So averaged one a day, Monday through Thursday. Uh, the pairs trades, something I want to point out, in the last 11 trades, only one loser. Uh, so I'm starting to find a little rhythm with the pairs trades. I've, I've got a lot of questions about when's, this, when's the pairs trade class coming out. We've just been really teaching it and testing it and, 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 and looking at different movement within the pairs uh, in the live stream. So kind of teaching and, and working through that live. Um, you know, originally when I was trading this, I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention too much to price action. It was more about just which, which indice was stronger or which asset was stronger than the other and, and looking for an expansion of that. Since I've implemented the, the price action here the last few weeks, it's been working really well. So I'm going to continue to test this, continue to trade it. I'm not going to put out a course uh, until I, I know that, it's, that we really have an edge and it's something valuable for you all. So Hopefully you appreciate that and, and, and you can be a little bit patient on us getting that out. But uh, I, I think we've we've got something here and I'll continue to trade it live and talk about it during our live stream. And then on the runners, second week in a row, under 50% win rate, second week in a row, positive P&L. So, um, you know, that just goes to show, you know, if you, if you do let these things run, then you can still book a profit with over 50% uh, win rate. Now, I don't like that. I'd rather be up closer to 60, which is where we want to be uh, this year. Uh, in 2021, we are at 57.4 on our runners. Uh, I'd like to be up in that 60 or higher uh, win rate. And you can see what happens when we do that. You know, that's right around 60, booked 3,400, over 67%. You know, I mean, look at the look at the amounts of profit you're getting with those win rates higher. But uh, I'm not worried about that. I'm still, I'm, you know, I'm taking good trade setups. Uh, they just have not had a, a as good of a, a win rate in the last couple of weeks. So uh, overall win rate, 65.4%. Like I said, total profit, uh, 2,700. So P&L to date, year to date, uh, 17, a little over 17.5. Uh, and then the total summary. So back since we started tracking this in uh, at the end of August, plus 9,300 on Mighty 90s, 1,800 pairs trades, and over 42,000 on runners. Uh, plus 53,000 since we've been tracking. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was I'm going to start tracking the P&L by day of week. Uh, and and I haven't gone back. I'm going to go back and, and get all the numbers for days of the week going, going back. But I uh, just started posting it here. So Monday was a loser. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday were all winners. 
And as I stated in last week's recap, you know, I, I think there's something to that. A, Monday, I'm just trying to get the juices flowing. I don't know this for a fact, but I feel like Mondays and Fridays are my worst trading days. And I feel like Wednesday is my best. It certainly played out that way this week, but I'll be doing some more uh, statistical analysis to bring those over to see if my thesis holds true. Uh, part of this is, you know, on Mondays, we trade the four days to expiration, Tuesdays three, and then two days to expiration, one, and then we jump back up to seven. So I don't really like the seven days to expiration, uh, that kind of that three and that four and three days to expiration are my favorite. And I think that's going to play out in the P&L too. So my goal of this is, you know, if, if, if my thesis is true, uh, I'm going to start increasing my size on Tuesdays and increasing my size on Wednesdays. I think Thursdays are probably pretty decent too, but we're trading one day uh, to expiration options that move really quickly. So if you trade too big, you can get smoked out pretty well. Uh, so I will, but, but Tuesday, or, Tuesday and Wednesday are the ones that I'm really targeting to potentially increase my size. I want some more weeks like this. You know, 2,500-ish, those are great. That's fine. That's cool. You know, a lot of those, but I want some more of these. And so that's the goal. All right, guys. Uh, like I said, Friday, offline. Monday, offline. Be back live Tuesday. If you guys have any questions, let me know.